Today I'm building an absolute dream PC. And I say that because it's the type of build you dream about owning. And when you wake up, you're like, shit, my life is better when I'm practically dead. But don't worry because this build could be yours since I'm giving it away like I always do for Build of the Month. Just follow the link in the description script for a chance to win it. And best of luck to all y'all. Let's go. <laughs> We're gonna build this PC one pod at a time, like we do. Started with a CPU, the Intel Core i9-14900K with 24 cores, eight of which are performance, 16 are efficiency. We've got 36 threads, and we got a max turbo frequency of six gigawatt gigahertz. To give my one-handed self a little bit of a break, I've already unboxed and prepped some of the pots, including the CPU right here. Oh, so shiny. That'll be going into our motherboard, which is the ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 Dark Hero. That's what they're calling it, because Black Panther was taken. The motherboard itself is an absolute unit on its own. It's got a 20 plus one plus two phase VRM for all the overclocking your heart desires, dual 8-pin EPS connectors at the top, super fast DDR5 memory support, and PCI Gen 5 for your graphics card and NVMe SSD. This looks like a basic USB-C header at first glance, but don't be fooled. It actually supports 20 gigabits per second and 60 watts of fast charging thanks to the 8-pin PCI connector that's right next to it. And lucky for us, that's fully supported by the front panel connectors on the case that we're using today. Woo! Just want to mention the dual Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports at the back here that support 40 gigabits per second and 100 watts fast charging. What? It's time to install the CPU. Don't fuck this up like you used to. Down the hatch. Oh! Meow, 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 meow. CPU install. SSD's nuts. The Corsair MP700 Pro PCIe Gen 5 by 4 NVMe M.2 SSD, 2 terabytes. Yes, we can actually take advantage of those PCIe Gen 5 speeds thanks to this motherboard. Woo -hoo -hoo. Let's go ahead and remove this chunky M.2 heatsink. Oh my god, that's a deep hole. I can hear the screwdriver's echo. Okay. Dang, dude. Bro, this thing is thick. Strip for me. You too, sugar. Toolless M.2 install. Cause M.2 screws are small and a pain in the ass. It's coming down. All right. If my memory serves me right, we have 64 gigs of Corsair Dominator Titanium DDR5 6400 speed. That's four 16 gig sticks. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Stay alive. Stay alive. Stay alive. That's too many staying alive. Funny enough, this might be the most insane part of the whole build. This case is ridic, dude. This is, not only is it massive, it's a full tower, it's super heavy, it's like 45 pounds, but it looks like an alien loot crate or something. ET phone home. But the build quality is super nice. We got this aluminum alloy frame that forms an X at the front and the top part can be used as handles to carry up to 175 pounds. Unfortunately, I weigh more than that. Why can't you support me? This front panel is gnarly, bro. We got a power button, combo audio jack for mic and headphone, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, and two USB-C ports capable of 20 gigabits per second and 60 watt fast charging with quick charge 4 plus which is supported on the motherboard as i just mentioned earlier there's also a reset and led control button i believe there's some rgb that happens on the front here we'll take a look at that once the build's done let's crack this side panel open boy i believe this side panel comes off the hinge let me just try to do this one-handed legend is about to break some glass mother Okay, let's just put you down right there. Don't shatter, don't shatter, don't shatter. Thank you. So we got four included 140 millimeter fans, three at the front, one at the rear. We're gonna swap those out with some other fans though, more on that later. And then we have this gorgeous LED panel, which I'm going to remove. It's addressable RGB. I've seen some videos. Go ahead and look it up. I'm gonna remove it because doing so gives you the option to mount three 120 millimeter fans, which I'm going to do. You could also mount three two and a half inch SSDs if you wanted to, but I'm gonna go the airflow route. We got a built-in GPU support system here. There's a couple brackets. This one's for horizontal mounting, I believe. This one's for vertical mounting. You can even wedge a GPU in here in between both of them, kind of clamp it down to keep it more secure. This is actually, this is metal. This is metal. Fingerprints, sorry. These are metal too. Man, this is heavy dude. No sagging in here, boys. Nine expansion slots. The case also includes this vertical GPU mount bracket if you want to put it in like that. Right at. But it doesn't include a riser cable, so you have to buy that separately. Unsurprisingly, the cooling support in here is pretty wild. You can do three 140s at the front, obviously, or at the top. You could even do dual 420 radiators at the same time. Little window cut out for a power supply. Hope it's not ugly. And what's this? Wait, wait, oh, 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 it's a secret compartment. It's a secret compartment. Oh. A secret stash. Perfect place for your screws, zip ties, ketamine. Shut up. On the back side, we have ample room for cable management. There's this plastic door that we gotta unscrew with a couple screws here. That swings open, I believe, and smashes your cables down. Shouldn't be too hard because we've got a lot of space in between the motherboard tray and the side panel. A generously sized CPU cooler cutout, two two and a half inch drive trays, and a hub. It supports up to six PWM fans and up to eight addressable RGB devices. What? Cooling our hot little potato here is the ASUS ROG Ryujin 3 360A RGB. That's a mouthful. That's what she said. I've never used this exact AIO before, but I kind of 
kind of dig it. It looks nice. It's got this fatty LCD. You can put whatever you want on there. Go ahead, knock yourself out. No one's watching. And if you pop that off, it reveals a little fan. Just to add some active cooling around your motherboard, around the VRM area, which tends to get pretty toasty. So that's a very nice feature. It does feature ARGB daisy chainable fans, which is a nice touch, but I'm going to swap those out with some of these. These Fantix D30 babies. The 120s, the 140s. Well, the 140s are for the case, but these are for the AIO. And my, oh my, they look so nice. I think it's just going to look really nice that everything's matchy matchy instead of just three random fans that don't match the black fans that come included with the case. Nothing against them or anything. We're just going to match things up. That case is also just so cavernous. There's so much empty space in there that I feel like it could really use some extra light to really illuminate the space. So that's why these things are great because they just, they, they get really lit, bro. They get so lit. Call your daddy. Just like the fans that come with the AIO, the D30s are daisy chainable as well. Love to see it. We're going to slap it on here and grab our little screws. I love what Asus did here. They included screws that have the washers welded to them. That is amazing and saves me a lot of time. And I just realized I can't use them with these fans because the D30s are 30 millimeters thick. <laughs> That's okay. They came with their own screws. And they don't need washers, so win-win. Da na 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 na. Na 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 na. We're gonna put these little covers on here. Makes it look all pretty and stuff. Da 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 da. Yeah. Now we're ready for the pump block. I already got the back plate on the bottom there. You can see the little threaded hose. We're gonna need some standoffies. Come on, little babies. I forgot how tall these freaking heat spreaders are. Let me remove these. <laughs> oh, so much better. Got that pre-applied thermal paste. Let's go. Tighten her up now. Let me just put on his little hat. Now, before we install the motherboard, we should probably remove this rear fan first. Not just because we're gonna swap it, but because it's getting a little too close for comfort and I don't wanna scratch this part of the board. So we gotta remove the fan, but it's not actually mounted directly to the case. Instead, it's mounted to its own removable bracket, it seems, which I believe is removable with these two screws. Okay. Oh, yep. So that's the bracket right there. Still mounts to the bracket the same way with the four screws in the corners, of course. Let's get this off. La, 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 la. Wait, why is it gonna... Oh, there we go. When the world needed saving, one hero was mentioned. The heavens cried out, it's the one-handed legend. Yeah, baby. Motherboards are so reliable. My father board left when I was two. All right, we got the D30 on the rear van mount now. We're gonna slip her in here. No harm, no foul. He's done it again. I don't understand his phenomenal power of only one hand. All right, how do we mount this sucker up here once and for all? What's going on up there in the rafters? I think we need to take this off. Oh yeah, it just comes up. Lots of room. Come on, baby. Work with me. Yep, that'll do it. So much screwing. Come on, little screws. Screwing every day. Next rule of order is to install more fans, more D30s, right where the LED panel is. So we have to remove that. But I think before we do that, we have to remove the fan bracket, which looks like it's in place with two thumb screws. Yeah. Oh, yep, yep, yep. It just pops out like that. Boom. I'm guessing I unscrew these four screws. I should probably read the manual, but I don't know how to read it. Shaking loose. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. Come on, baby. There we go. Oh, it is a nice panel, but airflow. Now, there's still this plate in the way where we could mount three two and a half inch drives. They'd be on the other side, the visible side, but we don't want to do that. We want to get rid of this whole panel. There's some way to get it out, but I'm not sure how. So let me learn how to read and check the manual. Okay, I figured it out. It's very simple. There's just a single screw at the very top of this plate that I got to undo, but it's actually being blocked by the radiator. Ah! This is why we read the manual, kids. All righty then, we finally removed this little bugger. We're gonna put him off to the side. We won't be needing him for the rest of the build. And I've gone ahead and mounted the fans to the bracket already. Theoretically, we should just be able to slide it in like that. <laughs> oh wait, that wasn't mounted properly. Okay. <laughs> that with the black and in with the RGB. How the heck am I gonna access those screws down there? Apparently we need to remove the PSU shroud in order to get to that bottom fan, which is fine because we gotta remove this thing to get to the power supply area anyway, install our PSU. So I believe the screws to do that are underneath here. There's one right there. <laughs> Where's the other one? There's supposed to be two. Is it in here? Oh, it is in here. Oh, ah! this case is hiding secrets of its own. Oh, and then this comes out, this whole thing. All right, two more screws. Gosh, there's a lot of screwing. I should start an OnlyFans. Let's go. Okay, maybe now. Oh, oh yeah. Yep, yep, there we go. I was wrong, I was all wrong. We didn't even need to remove the freaking PSU cover in order to access the fans here because there's a lever down here. Oh, oh, just gotta unscrew that. I think it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. You gotta read the manual for this case. It's not like the other cases. There's a lot of little things, little quirks to it, order of operations that need to be considered. So read the manual before you use this thing. One more screw. But that's what this channel's about, right? I make the mistake so you don't have to. Now we just gotta mount this to this and ran. This is the second longest one-headed activity I've done all week. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. That looks good, that looks good. It's time for the PSU. It's the Asus Prime 850 watt gold. I love gold. Aptly named, it is 80 plus gold certified, eight year warranty, ATX 3.0 compatible. Choose your style, cause you got black on one side and white on the other. You just gotta make sure that whichever side you mount it, you have ample airflow for that fan. We're gonna do face down, A, because it's black, but also because we got that dust filter on the bottom, baby. <laughs> I like that it's a shorter unit because it gives us more room for cables down here. We're getting close to the finish line, boys. Sorry, my microphone battery died, so I had to recharge it. And while I was waiting for that, I did a little bit of cable management around the back side. Everything went nice and smooth. Lots of tie-down points, lots of Velcro straps to keep everything.
everything nice and tidy and flat against that motherboard tray. I also found my PCIe Gen 4 Razer cable. It was lying around somewhere in the house and I dug it up. So here it is. We're going to do vertical GPU mounting. I think it just looks a little bit nicer in this build, which is why I also installed the vertical GPU mounting bracket, which was super easy to install. Just had to remove the horizontal expansion slots, pop that guy in there and screw her down. So now it is time to install our GPU, which is the Asus ProArt RTX 4080 Super. We've all seen the benchmarks of the 4080 Super to know it's comparable to 4080 performance, but at a much lower cost. And that's good for everyone. We've got 16 gigs of G6X memory and the latest and greatest suite of NVIDIA technologies like DLSS 3, ray tracing support, reflex, and studio. And this GPU is quite beautiful, if I do say so myself. Oh my goodness. Obviously, the 4080 Super is great for gaming, but the ProArt is not a gaming branded card. So you get a much more clean, minimalistic aesthetic that looks a bit more classy, in my opinion. Also, it's two and a half slots as opposed to three plus slots like we see with a lot of 4080 Supers and 4080s and 4090s, which means the fans are going to sit a little further back inside the case, and that gives us a bit more clearance between those fans and the side panel for additional airflow. Hmm. So let me just pop this guy in here. I just connected the other end of the GPU, and now we're going to carefully slide this in. Oh, that fits nice. Okay, I am going to need two hands for this. Actually, I can do it with one hand because I'm a boss. Plug in our 12 volt high power cable and we're done. Actually, I'm going to take advantage of the GPU sag bracket. We'll just lift this guy up to where we want him to be and screw it on. That actually works pretty well. The beast is complete, although we wouldn't really be done without a build montage. Hope you like that green matrixy theme I dialed in for the PC. I think it looks absolutely gorge, but the games are looking just as beautiful. We're in Cyberpunk 2077, 2560 by 1440 at Ultra, and we don't have ray tracing enabled just yet. I wanted to see how the performance and thermals were looking without ray tracing as a baseline, and they're looking good. We're doing over 100 FPS right now on average, and obviously there's a lot of fluctuation in this game, a lot of variance, but nothing short of buttery smoothness in all of the areas that I've explored so far. Thermals are just as impressive, roughly 62C right now on the GPU on that 4080 Super. Fantastic considering I did dial in a very modest overclock, 240 megahertz offset on the GPU core, and I think it was 200 megahertz on the memory clock. Uh, that leads us to 2730 megahertz on the GPU core clock, and our memory frequency right now is 11,500. Roughly 70C on the 14900 k Whoa, okay, a bit of cyber spunk going on there. Uh, 14900K at 70C, these settings is, is very impressive as well. Obviously, we got to do, you know, kudos to the AIO, the Rio Gen 3 is doing work, as well as the additional airflow. All the airflow that we have in the case, I'm really glad I swapped out that LED panel for those three 120 millimeter fans. I'm sure the system would be totally fine otherwise, but it does, I'm sure, bring down the temperatures a bit. Let's go ahead and see what things look like once we crank up settings to ray tracing. We're gonna do ray tracing ultra, and initially I'm gonna do no DLSS. I just want to see what this looks like without any kind of resolution scaling. Let's go ahead and resume. And boom, we've practically cut our frame rate in half, getting around 60 to 70 frames per second. I'm sure we're going to see some dips below 60 once we get into some more um, complex areas. Let's go up here. I think it's a bit more demanding up here. Let's see if we can tank it. Let's see if we can tank it below. So, oh, there we go. I saw 59. Do I hear a 58? Do I hear a 58? Going once. Going to the 56, 51. Okay, yeah, yeah. This is a this is a, a, a clunky area. This is, this is where it gets a little gritty. Mid 50s right now. Crank up that DLSS. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, frame generation. We're gonna use AI to basically create new frames and insert those in between the real frames uh, to hopefully give us a performance boost. Super resolution. We'll put this to quality so it's still looking the best as it possibly can. And then frame generation is enabled. Apply. Resume. And just like that. Wow, we're actually getting higher frame rates than we were without DLSS. That's pretty cool. The game looks beautiful. Everything looks nice. Oh, you want to look at power really quick. We're drawing roughly 300 watts. I'd say a little bit shy of 300 watts from the GPU alone, and then about 180 to 190 watts on the CPU. So I would say total system power draw is probably about 500 to 550 at the moment, which uh, isn't anything that our 850 watt unit can't handle. Shout out to NVIDIA and ASUS for sponsoring this video, for making this build possible, as well as 
my ability to give it away. Uh, really couldn't do it without those guys. Also, Asu sent over a bunch of random peripherals and stuff that I wasn't really gonna focus on too much in this video. Definitely after using some of them, worth talking about, worth checking out for you guys, particularly the keyboard and the monitor. But let's start with the monitor first. It's the XG27 AQMR, if I'm not mistaken. It's a 27 inch, 2560 by 1440 IPS, 300 Hertz, one millisecond display. I actually had to download Counter-Strike 2 just to experience 300 Hertz at roughly 300 frames per second. We're getting actually 350 FPS right now. And my goodness, guys, like I don't really have too much experience with super like hyper high refresh rate monitors, but if you play esports or anything like that, it ruins you. It is very hard to go back once you've experienced just how liquid the mouse cursor, like your aim just gets, I don't know. I feel like a better gamer, even though I die just as much. A lot of you are much better gamers than I am, so you'll actually be able to feel and leverage the advantage that 300 hertz gives you. It is just a super buttery smooth experience. And uh, thank God they're using IPS. You know, if, if the panel tech was like VA or God forbid, Twisted Matic, I wouldn't even be talking about it, but it is a very nice looking display as well. The keyboard is the ROG Azoth or Azoth, I don't know, but it's uh, their enthusiast grade, one of their enthusiast grade keyboards. And whenever I hear that from a brand, I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. It's probably not gonna compare to any keyboard that I've built personally, but this is actually impressive. This is uh, very surprising how good this is. First of all, it's built like a tank. It's very heavy. I, I'm sure there's a metal plate in here. It is a brick, which I absolutely love for keyboards. And the frame is just beautiful. The upper half of the case might actually be the same aluminum alloy material that they're using for the handles on the Hyperion case. Don't quote me on that, but it looks and feels amazing. But most of all, the typing experience on this thing is very nice. They're using ROG NX red switches. I believe it comes in blues and browns as well. Uh, but there's a number of other features that factor into why this feels and sound so good. They are using their own ROG stabilizers, which feel amazing. All the switches are pre-lubed and they even include additional lube with like even a little brush and stuff. They're getting really extra with it. And all that adds up to make a really solid feeling keystroke uh, and a beautiful sound. I mean, this is just a, a standard Corsair K60 keyboard. So here's, here's the difference. This is a space bar on the K60. Space bar on the Azoth. Like it's just a huge difference. K60. Azoth. It just, it's very nice. And it's a 75% keyboard, which in my opinion is a nice sweet spot between compactness and functionality. You don't have to hold the function key to use the F keys or the arrow keys or anything like that. It's got this OLED display in the top right corner, which at first I saw it and I was like, gimmicky, that's stupid and I don't like it but it's actually pretty useful. There's a knob to the right of that, which goes up and down. You can press it inward and there's a button on the side, which actually toggles between different settings that you can use that knob for, like volume adjustment, multimedia, lightning brightness, OLED brightness and lighting effects. And then you can just use the knob up and down to control it. So the OLED display is actually really useful to tell you which settings you're switching between at a glance. It's also got multiple ways to connect. You can use USB-C directly with a cable or you can connect it wirelessly via Bluetooth. I think there's three uh, devices that you can connect simultaneously and there's 2.4 gigahertz it's wireless, which is super fast, ultra low latency, no perceptible lag whatsoever. Definitely one of the things here uh, worth checking out if you're in the market for an enthusiast keyboard, but you don't want to build it yourself. The mouse is the ROG Harp Ace Aim Lab Edition. It's a super simple but very lightweight mouse at just 54 grams. I mean, it weighs probably a tenth of the box it comes in. I kept opening the box to, to pull the mouse out and it was already outside of it. I'd already taken it out. It's extremely lightweight, very comfortable. It has an ambidextrous design. Uh, because it's a uh, symmetrical, but I wouldn't call it a fully ambidextrous mouse because the pair of front and back buttons are only on the left side. It is multi-connectivity, so you can do wireless, same as the keyboard, either USB-C directly with a cable or Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz wireless, which is super fast again. And then it's got a DPI button on the bottom as well as it's a pairing button for the Bluetooth. I'm really glad that they included a pocket to store your USB wireless dongle so you don't lose it. It claims to have an 88 hour battery life. I'm not gonna sit around and test it, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's decent. I would say this is fairly comparable to the Logitech G305, which has been my go-to wireless mouse for a really long time now, especially when I'm traveling because it's so light and convenient. This is half of its weight. I'm probably going to swap it out for that uh, G305 pretty soon just because I, I just love the, 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 the lightness to it, and I think that makes it more comfortable for me personally. Asus sent me a headset as well, the ROG Delta S Core. This is roughly a $100 headset, so nothing too fancy. Uh, it sounds okay. It's 50 millimeter drivers. Pretty standard what you would expect from a $100 headphone. I would say the, 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 the prime feature here is comfort. It's 270 grams, super light for, a, for any kind of headset or headphones for that matter. The ear cups are made of protein leather. They're super comfortable as well as the headband, but if protein 
leather is not your jam, they've also included an alternate pair of uh, fabric ear cups, which uh, feel pretty nice as well. It's got a flexible boom mic, which is Discord and TeamSpeak certified, and it is detachable if you want to use these as headphones out in public without looking like a freak. The last item here is the ROG Hone Ace XXL mouse pad. It's a very nice, sizable mouse pad, 900 by 400 by 3 millimeters thick. It has an anti-slip uh, backing, which is very grippy. Like, if you want to move or reposition this mouse pad, you have to lift the whole thing up and then put it back down because it's just, once it's planted, it's planted. Uh, it feels really nice. The fabric surface is very trackable. It tracks beautifully, and it's uh, it's got a nano coating as well. So water, oil, dust, that sort of thing it's going to be uh, very resistant to. It's going to repel it nicely. Stitched edges, as you'd expect, and a super minimalistic design with the ROG logo in the top right, and uh, whatever this is going on over here on the left. I don't know what it is, but I like it a lot. It just kind of adds a little bit of style without overbearing things. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description below, as well as all the parts for today's build that, again, you can win. Make sure you enter that giveaway link link in the description. Check it out. As always, thank you guys so much for watching my videos. It really means a lot to me. I hope you guys are enjoying the content lately, and uh, I will be back soon with another video. So get subscribed if you haven't yet. Toss a like on it if you enjoyed it, and I will see y'all in the next one.